Okie dokie. So it's 7 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And once again, if anyone, for anyone that shows up late or misses this, I'm going to be uploading this to YouTube as well. So tonight we're going to be talking about cartridge maintenance. And so first let's go ahead and talk about old school game consoles and kind of how cartridges worked. So when you get down to it, old school game cartridges at the very heart are just computers. They're very, very specialized computers and they include a lot of specialized hardware, but at their core, they're computers nonetheless. And so whenever we talk about retro game consoles, it's best to kind of talk about them in terms of computers. And so at the era and time when a lot of these consoles were created, uh, this it wasn't a time period like we have today where you have tons of memory and we have very powerful graphics cards that are able to render, you know, fantastic things like huge cities or landscapes like you see in the Elder Scrolls or Grand Theft Auto. No, no, it was a very different time. And so if you had one megabyte of memory, it was considered a big deal. And so with that in mind, you know, it's in that sense, it's very similar to today that game systems have always kind of been a step behind home computers. And so what the developers that created these early consoles were looking at were was trying to fit an enormous amount of data and the operating system used by these consoles into a very limited space. And so that includes storage. Now, if they had tried to preload the NES with a bunch of games like the NES Classic was loaded or now the SNES Classic, they wouldn't have been able to do much just because we really didn't have the storage capacity in that small scale the way that we do today. Uh, the systems would have been a lot more expensive and that probably would have ended up cutting into their profit margins and very few game consoles uh, would have survived. Also, another thing to note important thing to note is at the time the NES was released, this was in the middle of actually a video game crash. So a lot of investors weren't really investing in video games at that time. And Nintendo's kind of the one that revived that. And so with that in mind, the solution to how can we get this, a large game library on this very specialized piece of hardware was the cartridge. And so at the very heart of things, the cartridge itself, uh, this is an example of an NES cartridge, and as you can see, there's not really a lot inside. So one question you might ask is, well, why are they so big then if that's all you end up using? Well, first off, some cartridges did actually use the full size, and as the list below here indicates, uh, the reason the cartridges were so large was uh, for the I guess, potential to expand the original system. So unlike today where you kind of get an Xbox or a PlayStation that has everything kind of prepackaged, uh, these little cartridges, most of the time, all of them would have an EEPROM chip, which would actually contain the game or program that you were going to be playing. But some would also contain things like graphics chips, which would upgrade the graphics, uh, graphic capabilities versus what was capable with the base system. Uh, some of them had sound chips that would provide richer sound. Some would have a save file chip, which would allow you to pick up where you left off. And with that save file chip, uh, some of the cartridges would have a battery as well. Uh, unlike today, where today is like Nintendo cartridges and even some of the later Game Boy Advance cartridges, older systems didn't use flash memory. And instead, they relied on erasable... ROM chips that could be reprogrammed uh, on the fly so that every time you save, the chip was rewritten. Well, you kind of have the same limitation again as a personal computer in the fact that when that was erased, if you didn't have some way to keep power in that chip, all the data would pretty much be white. And so you needed a battery to do that. And some, some cartridges, and this is more you see in uh, things like Game Boy Advance cartridges were really, really prevalent for this. 
is things like special sensors. So advan or examples of this would be like Kirby Tilt and Tumble for the Game Boy Color, where it actually had a gyroscopic sensor that would allow you to tilt it and move Kirby around back and forth. So there was a lot of potential with cartridges, but the thing to remember about these things is their physical, I guess their, their, their physical machines or parts of physical machines. And as that, they're prone to mechanical wear. And so the big two ways that these cartridges, I guess, get mechanical wear, what you would consider mechanical wear, is the batteries go dead and you get corrosion which that's rust they don't really typically rust it's more of they get tarnished but uh it does have a detrimental effect so first let's talk about what happens when you get corrosion well on the bottom of the cartridge you know everyone knows that there's or most people that are into retro games know there is a line of metallic pins and so what happens when you plug that in is those pins connect with a slot on the inside of the machine and that allows the machine to read the program off the cartridge. Well, if the cartridge gets dirty or tarnished, the machine has a really hard time telling what data it's reading off. And like the picture shows, machines aren't very good at making assumptions, so it just says, okay, this looks more like a one than a zero, so let's go with it. And the effects you get is, well, if it's really tarnished, you're not gonna see anything show up on your screen at all. But most likely you get things like you'll see instead of the actual sprite that you're normally used to seeing, you'll see a like black or white box. Sometimes you'll see text and other times uh, just pieces of the level will be missing or you'll be playing a level, try to make a jump and all of a sudden it'll just crash. Now, the second issue that can happen is the battery goes dead and that's kind of the equivalent of this. So the moment that battery goes dead, uh, and this is more for uh, cartridges that have save files, but the moment that battery goes dead, your entire save file is gone. And for those of you who actually have cartridges that have save files on them and, you know, your cartridge still, like the battery is still live to where the data is still there, uh, once the cartridge start the battery starts going dead. Uh, I've actually seen some ways that you can actually pull the save data off of the cartridge while you change the battery and then pop it back on. Normally this requires special hardware like flash carts or uh, I, more, of, more I've seen it on Game Boy cartridges again. They have cheat devices that'll let you make a backup of your save, but uh, I don't see why it wouldn't be possible to do that for Nintendo or SNES cartridges. I just haven't looked into it for those systems. But yeah, the general process for that would be to pull your save off, change the battery, and then load the save back on. And I may do, I may try to look up uh, software that actually allows you to back up saves for that and do that in a later stream. But today, uh, we're just going to focus on a Game Boy cartridge I have that I think the battery's dead in, or at least going, and we'll talk more about that when we get to it. So, uh, that's all I have for the introduction, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you guys how to uh, actually clean your cartridges. So, this isn't a very complex process. Uh, let me go ahead and start my webcam. And there we go. So to clean your cartridges, and the cartridges I'm going to be working with today are Sega Genesis, but first you'll need uh, something like this. It's a cartridge kit. You can purchase these off Amazon for about five or ten bucks, and it's basically a collection of tools you need to get into your game cartridges. Uh, typically, Nintendo and Sega weren't too keen on people doing home maintenance on their cartridges. And so a lot of the screws, as you, if I can get it to the webcam, there we go. I don't know. There we go. Uh, the screw, as you can see, it's kind of a, it's like a hex bolt. 
And so it's not a standard screw and it be, can be kind of hard to remove those without a cartridge kit. Now there's tutorials online that kind of show or suggest you can use a flathead screwdriver. Honestly, since it's only $5, I would recommend go ahead and getting the cartridge kit. They normally come with tools to help you get into multiple cartridges as well. So, I mean, it's not a bad investment. So with the cartridge kit, very easy. Just turn that and pop it out. And the place I got these from, I got the, ended up getting these really cheap. But after I got home, I kind of found out why I got them really cheap, is they're really dirty. And so this could be interesting on what we find inside. So there we go. As you can see, and this one's actually not in too bad shape, but very simple. Uh, also, make sure you always hold it by the edges as the oils from your skin can really corrode uh, circuitry. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that and move my mouse. Now, the second thing I would recommend is uh, get yourself some metal polish. And the one I'm using is just Brasso. And so the general idea of what we're going to do is we're actually going to polish the pins. And uh, like that first slide showed, the benefits to this are it makes it easier for the system to read the information off the cartridge, and so it makes the game run better overall. Now, that's not the only thing we're going to do on cleaning. You also want to clean the case itself, because otherwise the dust, uh, you can have dust that collects on the bottom of the case, and when you plug it in, it'll actually make the slot dusty and the whole cycle repeats itself. But right now we're going to go ahead and polish the pins. And so what you want to do is take a Q-tip and just get a little bit of brass polish on there. And so pick that up. Like I said, you want to make sure to hold it by the edges. And you're just going to take that Q-tip and kind of rub it across. And don't worry if it gets on the circuit board. This stuff is not going to short it out. Uh, and we'll use rubbing alcohol later to remove the excess. I mean, if you really want to, you can use the other, uh, other side of your Q-tip and just kind of wipe that off. But yeah, and it's hard to keep it by the edges sometimes, but do your best to keep it by the edges if at all possible. And you also may need to use several Q-tips and also use quite a bit of brass polish uh, depending on how bad your cartridge is. The worst one I actually had uh, was Star Fox for Super Nintendo. And I opened up the cartridge, or tried to open up the cartridge, and my first clue that something was kind of amiss was it was really hard to open the cartridge. And so at first I thought I missed a screw or something, and so I'm looking on the back of the cartridge and everything and then I remembered uh, on one of the other Super Nintendo cartridges I opened there were only two screws so I quickly dismissed that idea and I looked on the side and I noticed something that was kind of dark brown almost black in color almost like a molasses and I'm guessing what happened is someone spilled coke in or on the cartridge and it kind of cemented it shut and so I just kind of gave it a little tug and pulled it open and I thought that was uh, the most surprising thing I was going to happen but when I pulled the stupid thing open th I'm not even kidding you there were like eight to ten cockroaches like dead cockroaches inside the cartridge and so I spent the next I spent a good hour and a half, two hours, really trying to get that cartridge clean. Uh, I had some paper towels with alcohol on them, rubbing alcohol, and uh, I really, really, really uh, spent a long time getting all the, I guess, bug parts and all the soda off. Uh, after an hour and a half, I actually managed to get the case clean, and I I very, very gingerly scrubbed the board the best I could uh, using rubbing alcohol. 
But, and I was honestly, after seeing that, I honestly was just like, okay, this thing probably is not going to work. The pins were actually so corroded that they actually had rusted. Like, I guess that soda or whatever they spilled on it actually got on the pins. And there was actually, uh, like you could tell it was copper corrosion on the pins. And so, and a lot of these game cartridges are dual sided. So you want to make sure that you actually do both sides. But yeah, after I cleaned it up, I popped it into my retro player and sure enough, it booted up just fine. So, I mean, the some of the brass polish is kind of rubbed off, but it works. So this... This is definitely something that if you get a if you get a game cartridge and it's not working, I would definitely try cleaning the pins before you call it lost or return it because it really could just be that simple. And a lot of the stores in Austin I haven't had problems with. Uh, the store I got these at was actually a smaller store in a small town. Uh, I visited my grandparents over the summer and they live in this little bitty town in North Texas called Sherman that's outside Dallas and so there's not really a lot of a retro game market there which is kind of a good thing and a bad thing it's a double-edged sword it's good in the sense that it's easier to find stuff uh, like the more popular stuff like Sonic games and Kirby Adventure Island that kind of stuff because there's really not a large market for it around there the bad thing is uh, they don't really know how to take care of these things, and a lot of the cartridges were really dirty. Uh, I also have two cartridges that have dead batteries that I'm going to have to replace, which once again, I may do on a later stream. I actually was planning to do that on this stream, except Hurricane Harvey is kind of wreaking havoc on UPS and Postal Service, so those the batteries actually got delayed and they're not going to get in until September 1st. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do the Super Nintendo batteries today. But I do have a Game Boy Advance battery I'm going to be replacing here in a sec. Oops, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, the main, it's just going to put a little bit of elbow grease in there and just really want to make sure the pins are shiny. Yeah. If they're shiny like that, you've done a good job. And so now the next step, uh, you get another Q-tip. And I actually don't have the right one to use. Uh, want some rubbing alcohol, and you actually don't want the 50%. You want 90, you want at least 90, 99. You want to get as close to 100 as you can because the other stuff that they put in there is not really alcohol and like I said, I mean, I really shouldn't be using this stuff, but it's all I've got, and I do want to clean that stuff off, so I'm going to be just very, very careful with it, and I've got a... Get off the screen. Sorry, pop-up window pulled up. Uh, I've got a paper towel here, which I'm going to use to dry it off fairly quick. Okay, so just... I mean, you don't need to be too ginger with it, or too zealous with the alcohol just kind of rub it like i said your main goal is just to get that brass cleaner off so just rub the pins down and then uh, i'm going to do the other side as well there we go make sure to stay on camera all right, so just rub the pins down and then take your paper towel and just give it a quick rub. And try to keep the paper towel off the actual circuit. You just want the pins. And like I said, you're just trying to get the excess brass polish off at this point. And that is, that is beautiful. So, like I said, the last thing you want to do, and I think I've got some rubbing, yeah, I've got some rubbing alcohol in here still. You want to make sure and just take your paper towel and just really kind of give that, give the case a good wipe down. Because like I said, it's actually just as important to clean that case 
as it is to clean the circuits because if you don't you can actually get dirt build up in the case as well and so just pop a little more rubbing alcohol in there and again I mean you don't need to go crazy with it you're just kind of trying to give it a light cleaning and you definitely want to make sure that all the moisture has dried especially if you're not using high grade alcohol like me because you the last thing you want to do is spend all this time cleaning your cartridge just to have the darn things short out so check chat okay and pull this back up okay I've got my preview good okay now do this side all right just a little bit and like I said the, the biggest part you want to get is this bottom part right there I'm gonna pull my cheat screen up here for a sec yeah yeah that bottom part you really want to make sure all right and make sure it's dry all right and so after you've cleaned it it is just a matter of putting it back together and normally these have find the one normally these things have measures to where you can't really put them in backwards like they'll only fit in one way so go ahead and pop that there and judging by the fact that there's a lot more space on this one than this one I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the chips go in facing this side all right so now we go ahead and pop the screws back in and this is supposed to lock okay and then just go ahead and screw in there we go and don't put too much force on that because you don't want to strip the bolt and the back of this now this you don't really have to do but I'm really really kind of anal about having clean cartridges so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down the outside of it too All right, like I said, these things, gosh, they were cheap, but doggone, they're dirty. So, all right, and there we go. Good as new or as close to new as I can get it. So that is how you clean a cartridge. And the process is basically the same for all retro cartridges, whether it be Game Boy, whether it be super nintendo or nes i mean they all pretty much it's the same thing you open it up you take it out make sure not to touch the circuit itself and then uh, give it a good polish with the brass cleaner give it a wipe down with the alcohol and then close it back up now second part of this broadcast is going to be the replacing a battery and I am going to be using Pokemon Ruby. And so if I grab my trusty Game Boy, I will show you the reason that I have to believe that this battery is going out. Okay. So move this over and my laptop is in the way. And it's not showing up. One sec. may need to be cleaned as well so all 
Okay, this may need to be cleaned. Worked earlier when I popped it in. Don't know why it suddenly decided it wants to be hateful. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and clean it because I think it's having some trouble. Yeah, it's not showing up. Okay, so like I said, you're, we're going to need to get another one of our cartridge kit tools. So first we're going to clean it and then I'm going to open it back up and we're going to take a look at the battery. Come on, get out there. So for these, uh, you need one of these, which you can't really tell. I mean, it's really hard, but uh, this is a special screwdriver that actually has a triangular tip and it's made especially for opening up Game Boy Advance cartridges. Uh, if you purchase a cartridge kit, this sh it should come with one of these. And so for Game Boy Advance, uh, yeah, there's there's a trick. You gotta slide. There we go. You gotta kind of slide it up a little bit, and then you can just pull the front off. And uh, they look pretty decent. So as you can see, similar to the Sega cartridge, except it's got a battery, and that is for the save chip to keep your save actually loaded even when the cartridge has no power and so very carefully I'm going to try to get this chip out of there without touching it and that's an easier thing said than done actually I'm looking at the back of this and there are no pins so we're just gonna leave it be in its little case and I'm going to be very, very, very careful not to get any of this stuff underneath the pins, lest I have to take this out. So, same process. Going to get a Q-tip with a little bit of metal polish on it. And we're actually going to turn on the light because it's starting to get dark in here. There we go. Much, much better. And these are actually pretty shiny, so I'm not sure what in the heck the deal is but we're gonna go ahead and give them a polish just in case like I said I'm not really sure unless the battery just decided it was gonna go ahead and fully die and now the but that shouldn't affect it because I had another one of these that the battery did die and the only thing it affected was the clock the clock wouldn't update like it was supposed to and that does <laughs> that does mess up the game and it can make certain parts of it impassable for example uh, if your clock if the clock won't reset you can end up with shoal cave being stuck at either high or low tide depending on what time the clock is stuck and uh, the different daily events and weekly events that fire off don't fire off but it shouldn't impact things that heavily yeah this thing is hardly dirty at all so I'm not sure why like I said uh, no so I didn't blow into the system because that's really bad for it and you don't want to blow into your system unless you absolutely have to I don't have any canned air at the moment or I would do that. All right, so I just polished that and I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and you can actually pop it in there without the front on, theoretically. No, you can't. Okay. The Game Boy Color ones you can pop in without the front on. Okay, so there we go. See if it works. There we go. So yeah, it was just needing to be polished. So the reason that I think the battery may need to be replaced is that right there. Now, I don't think the battery is completely dead, but I don't remember seeing that on my Sapphire cartridge. In fact, let me go ahead and grab that real quick. Give me just a sec.
All right. So I've got my sapphire cartridge, which I recently replaced the battery in. Give it to me. And I don't think it pops that message up if it's like on normal circumstances. Yeah, see, so no message. So I don't think the battery's dead, but I think it's going. And so we're just going to go ahead and replace the battery. And so normally you would want to back up your save file. This is not my save file, so I don't really care. And actually, again, for these, I don't think it matters because I think the main part of the well, no, it does matter because if the battery completely dies, it dies in stages. So the first thing that starts, I think, is that message. And then it gets to a point to where it says the clock is essentially doomed. That uh, monthly and weekly events don't work anymore. And then I'm not sure, actually, now that I think about it, if these may use a combination of flash memory and an actual battery like the battery may handle the clock and then it actually may use a flash memory chip for uh it may actually use a flash memory chip for the clock or for, not for the clock for the save i know this is around the time period where they were starting to use flash memory for cartridges uh but as far as i know this shouldn't wipe out the save data but we're going to go ahead and try to get this out of here because I do need to get this out of here to do what I'm about to do. It's a little more intensive than cleaning, and it comes right out good. So, what we're going to have to do, if we can, and I'm trying to see, because I can't tell if this is soldered on or glued on. We need to get that battery off, and we need to get one of our batteries. I've got some replacement batteries. You're actually going to need a soldering iron for the battery part. And so I've got some replacement batteries. And I think... I think it's this one. Okay. So this looks like it's a little different than my sapphire cartridge. And I want to make sure that I don't mess this thing up. Who this hmm Yeah, this looks different than the one I have because if you look at the sides if I can get this if my webcam will focus there we go so if you look at the sides I don't know give it a sec to focus maybe I can get it to focus and I think my hands shaking a little bit because I'm trying to focus on standing making it sit still and I also think there's a glare I'm going to, okay, focus. Maybe if I try putting my fingers up here next to it. Because I think it's trying to focus on the background. Okay. Well, you can't really see it, but the problem is, if you look at these tabs, uh, they're a little bit different than the ones I have. It looks like these are actually poked through the board. And... You can see the difference if I show you the sapphire one I did a couple of, about a month ago. So, this is interesting. All right. Yeah. So, if I can get this thing focused. Yeah, if you notice, you see it's, it's mounted a little bit differently than the ruby cartridge is. So this one, the pins are actually flat on the board. And on the ruby cartridge, they actually poke through the board. And I I'm fairly confident I can get 
the battery off but I don't know if I could actually get the thing back on and that's mainly because I would have to clip the clips that are on this thing and make it to where they poke through the board like that. I'm trying to get this sapphire cartridge back together. There we go. <sighs> Let's see. Okay. Hold it by the edge. I wonder, because this looks like, this feels like I could just kind of wiggle it and pop it out. Aha. Okay, so... Yeah, it's definitely, hmm, I can't be sure, but it almost looks like there's corrosion on the bottom of this thing. Okay, and I'm trying to see, I think the top is, I think this is the plus side. Okay, so make sure, okay, so the bottom side was on, or the top side was on this side make sure I'm keeping this straight because that is important you definitely don't want to mount these things upside down yeah so this side okay So it's mounted like this. And so we need to actually, I'm trying to think if I have pliers up here because I may need to bend those prongs to where they'll actually fit on the, to where they'll actually rest on the board. Yeah, one sec, let me grab a pair of pliers real quick. Got them. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a pair of needle nose pliers. And we are going to attempt to bend these prongs the same way that the other ones were. You want to be very careful and you don't want to be too rough here. Okay. And this one's the hard one. One. 
Okay, and we're going to try to make this match to the best of our ability. This is the most annoying things about these Game Boy Advance cartridges, is the stupid things. It's the way that they're placed over the stupid ship. But we definitely want to make sure everything lines up. Okay, so that one looks like it's lining up. This one looks like it could be pushed out a little bit more. Okay. Needs to be bent a little bit more. Okay. No, you don't. Make sure to hold it by the edge. Okay, that's... Yeah. Well, I've certainly... Like, I can see it touching. The only question now is whether I... It's actually... Like, whether it's actually going to connect to the board and hold a charge or pass a charge to the other... Whether it's actually going to pass a charge the way it's supposed to. Hmm. Maybe? It's interesting. I've certainly never done anything like this. You know what? I think what I need... One sec, I'm going to grab something else, because I can see, I think if I clip off half this clip, that I'll actually have something that's pretty close to what was originally... to what originally... the way the board was set up. I'm almost wondering if I can't get one of my tools and very gingerly poke out that solder and just pop the board... pop this through the board without soldering it. So give me just a sec, I'll be back in like two seconds, I'm just going to grab a couple of tools. All right, I am back. I am sorry for the delay there. So what I have here is this is a specialized soldering tool that's actually designed to do exactly what I need to do, which is poke out the solder from this little hole. So what I'm going to do is very, very gingerly center it. I'm just going to rotate this. And I've got it over a soft paper towel. We're just going to rotate it. 
And I'm trying to avoid using heat if I can, because I could melt this out with a soldering iron, but I don't want to damage the board that's around it. And so I'm trying to use these tools first to do this, and if I really can't, then I'll go ahead and get a soldering iron. Okay. Oh, I can feel it kind of... <sighs> I can definitely feel... Ah! Oh. Ah, oh, look at that. It's actually coming. Okay, and like I said, I'm, I'm being very careful with this because I don't want to... The last thing I want to do is ruin this cartridge. Okay, that one's removed. Like I said, I'm not really sure if this method that I'm going to be using is going to work or not, but we're going to try it. And like I said, I'm putting, being very ginger with the amount of force I'm putting on this. Because I, the last thing I want to do is end up going through this board and ruining it. I've never had a battery. That was soldered in quite this way. All the other ones have had flat tabs, like the one I showed on Sapphire. And I've replaced several, uh, including the old Gen 1 Pokemon and also the Gen 2. And then also Sapphire, so this is kind of... I can see... Yeah, this piece, I may need to just get the soldering iron and bite it. Well, it's kind of, it's slow, but... I said you don't want to put too much pressure on it because you'll you'll end up cracking the board. I think this part broke off with a little more metal. And that's the reason this one's being a little more stubborn on coming out. The other one, I managed to break it off right at the board. I may need to desolder this. Oh, I actually, I think I just, yes, I don't need to solder it, I just broke through, I just need to give it a little more, so perfect, so we have 
created a hole. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to thin out these clamps because right now it's a flat tab with a little metal hole in it and that's a little too thick to fit in those holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wire cutter and we're going to clip half this off. And the idea is that hopefully by doing this, that it'll fit, that I can get it to go through that little hole in the board. If I can do that, I may not need to solder it at all. Which is kind of a double-edged sword because first off, I mean, it makes it a little easier for if the battery goes out again, which should be about 10 years or so. But it also is kind of a shame because I was kind of wanting to show you guys how you go about soldering or how you replace a battery with soldering. But if I don't get to do that today, then I will just show you guys on another broadcast. Okay, and it's not playing nice. Come on, there we go. Uh, we're going to kind of use these needle nose pliers to kind of, well, I don't know if that'll go through or not. I don't think it will. So I'm going to use the needle nose pliers to kind of crimp this a little bit. And same thing with the other one. Hey, you stop it. There we go. And that should be, okay. Okay, yeah. And now let's see if we can't get this doggone thing to go through the board. Oh, it works. Or at least it goes through the board. I don't know if it's gonna work yet, but the important thing is we've confirmed it'll actually go through the board. And now if you'll cooperate with me, here, try this one. This pin needs to be, this needs to be tweaked out a little bit more. I'm hoping that now that I've done all this, that it's not gonna be picky and not wanna go through the board. Okay, need to adjust this a little bit more. Also, I'm trying to be very careful. I don't want to end up ruining this cartridge. Oh, you stop it. Okay, we're going to try to hold this in place. And I may end up having to solder this thing yet. Because I got it unsoldered okay, but it is not wanting to go back in. Tabs are just a little. Come on. It's so close.
Let's do dog on chip. It is so close. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is very, very carefully try to solder this in. thought I could do this without soldering but I honestly don't think that I do I can just because I don't think this thing is gonna hold by itself so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get the soldering iron set up so let me go ahead <clears throat> And kind of clear some of the stuff from my cleaning. And we're going to start getting soldering set up. So, there we go. Reach under my desk and pull this out. Oh, dag nabbit. Okay, give me just a sec. My monitor, my second monitor, accidentally pulled out the power cord, and that's why the screen suddenly shifted. Oh, so let me take a step, second, and throw this back on the other monitor. So that there's not probably an infinite cascade. And hey, just saw if I can read that, let me pull this. Hey, Game Center DX. Okay. So we're pulling out the soldering iron and there we go. And give that a second to heat up and hopefully this stupid cord will behave itself. And while that's happening, see if I actually have yeah, I've got my solder. That is going to be hell. And it's really going to be hell. Otherwise, I don't think the pins are going to hold because it's just... It's like the pins are just a smidgen. Well, they're the perfect length for soldering, but they're they're not long enough for me to do what I was wanting to do, which is uh, I was wanting to actually bend the pins underneath the board, and they're just a little bit too short for that. I'm still trying to negotiate some way to actually do the first way because, like I said, soldering can, if you're not really careful with soldering, you can really damage these things very easily, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. 
I can smell my soldering iron, so it's nearly hot enough. Okay. I'm tr this is kind of a precarious thing I'm doing because I've got to hold the battery in place. And then also not touch the board if I can. And then also solder. That one tab is just really not wanting to line up for me. All right, there we go. Oh, I need like three more hands. Okay. Make sure that stupid pin. Okay. And we're gonna give ourselves a lot of room. Easy. Trying to get this stupid thing to actually stay in place while I solder it. I may just have to leave it in place and kind of good faith solder, solder one pin and then solder the other one after that one's in place. That's what we're going to do, because I really don't want to screw this up. Okay, I don't know if that thing is actually on or not. We're going to find out. Oh, I think I actually did it. Oh, thank heavens. And actually, if I can do what I did before, that'd be perfect. Because what I did before is I actually got that little blob of solder on the soldering iron. Okay. 
Oh, I think I did it. So let's see. Oh dear. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. It's not wanting to lay flat across the battery. I need it to lay flat across the battery because otherwise this thing is not going to... close. Okay. So we're going to have to... Why, battery? Why must you be so difficult? Uh, try to get the thing to... Try front soldering it. Just try to get it... Because that thing is not... Actually need a wet paper towel, but oh, solder dug on it. It's not wanting to solder onto the board. Ah, oh, come on. <sighs> Gotta watch out too, because if you get these batteries too hot, you'll actually heat kill them. And so then I'd have to repeat this whole process over again. This little pin is just not... There goes the solder. Like I said, this pin is not wanting to play nice. It's just a smidgen too short. Twisting that. I may just try to get some electrical tape and kind of tape it down because honestly, I am really worried that if I, this, I think this is too short and that one pin just does not want to connect. Try clearing the hole again, see if it...
Yeah, that pin is just too short. The other one is fine, but this is just, it's... I'm trying to think if there's anything that I could do that would actually be able to get this thing to Other than electrical tape, I really don't know anything I could do to make this thing just stick. That pin is just a little bit too short. Wait a minute. That's really risky, but what I could do... I'm thinking about trying to cut this in a certain way to where I could actually unspool it a little bit. Alright, I'm going to tug on this and try to desolder this. Because... Got it. Okay. Have an idea. Uh, this is going to need to be desoldered. Uh, so while I'm desoldering this, I'll kind of tell you what I have planned. I'm going to try and cut this in such a way that it allows me to kind of unravel the to where it allows me to unravel the strip a little bit making it longer I don't know if this will actually work or not but I'm gonna give it a shot okay so I got the solder out okay Gonna be very ginger. Very, very careful. We're gonna clip once there. Or if I could find a way to. Main thing is, is I need to find a way to extend this a little bit. And I don't have anything readily available that I can use. Come on. And I don't want to just cut this off because I actually need it to be... I actually need this to be connected still, I just need it to be a little bit longer than it is. It's just not quite long enough to get the job done. Let's see if I'm able to... did I actually stretch it? Okay, grab it by the edges. And it's still not quite. 
It's that chip that's in the way. Sorry, I don't mean to keep going off camera, but uh, that chip that's in the way is really impeding with things. Okay, what if I go the other way? Yeah, it's just this one chip does not want to, or that one peg does not want to stay. Huh. Actually, interestingly enough, it may just be that one pin. Oh, that little bugger is just not wanting to stay. Yeah, it's just like a fraction too short. Okay, do I still have that one of those pieces that I cut off? This will work. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is solder what I'm going to try to do is create an extended pin from this dead battery because the problem is, is this pin is just like a fraction too short for me to work with Okay, so I've got this, and so what I'm going to do is, it, or at least what I'm going to attempt to do, is crimp this around that other pin. And hopefully, create kind of a longer pin to work with to where I can actually get this stupid thing to work. It's sorry, I'm not doing this. I keep wandering off camera because kind of folk really trying to focus in on this, but it's not my intention to cut you guys off. Okay. All right. So, oh dang it, had it there for a sec. Okay, I see, just try flattening this a little bit. If I can. Oh, doggone, this thing is not playing fair.
Okay, I'm gonna need to like hold this with these, throw this in there, and then crimp. Which is easier said than done. Because this thing is not wanting to. Well, nothing's wanting. Nothing about this Ruby cartridge has really wanted to cooperate. There we go, hopefully. There we go. And just really crimp the crap out of it because I don't want this thing to come undone. Okay, now I honestly, at this point, I don't even know if this will fit. I suspected, no, no it won't, which means I gotta keep working on it. To both get it skinny enough to fit and tight enough to where it doesn't come undone. What I'm going to, okay, what I'm going to try to do, oh, this is, I'm going to try to flatten this and solder these two pieces of metal together and then just insert it. I think that might work. At this point, I don't know, but I'm willing to give it a shot. I would really like to get this thing, get this battery on here. Okay, if I can just get it to stay together for like two seconds. Actually, I think it's just coming crimped again. So I may not need to, like I said, I'd like to avoid soldering if possible. It seems like I can get it flat or thin, but not both. All right. Now, will this fit through the stupid pin? That's the question. I guess it will. Okay, come on. Aha. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is trim this. 
And I'm going to use the pair of pliers that work. Now we're going to set this tab, crimp it, and hope that that works. Okay. So, now I just need to find that screw that goes to it. There you are. Come on. Okay, there we go. And now, the moment of truth. Ah, <sighs> oh, that's not good. I will break my blowing rule just because, ah, uh, nuts. Okay, try to scrub this down. I think I may have got some stuff on the, either that or I just bricked the stupid thing. And if that's the case, then I'm going to be heading to Amazon. It would also be monumental. That'd be my first brick. Okay. Just try cleaning the pins. Okay. Yeah, I think this thing's dead. Unfortunately. Try one more time, see if I can't get it to All right, see if I can notice anything else. I don't see any excessive black spots or anything like that to make me think. Let me try removing the battery and seeing if it's the battery. Because it may just be the way that I'm crimping that tab under there. And if that is the case, then I'm just going to call it a night and I'll try to order a battery or find another battery or something that's not so weird. Yeah, this cart may be dead. Try one more time. Third time's a charm, right? Oh wait, what is, well that would, ex well it may explain something, it may not, but part of the battery came off, but the other part is still stuck. Okay, 
Come on out. All right. And come on, do not. Yep, it is. So apparently, I don't know exactly where, but somewhere that sucker is damaged, and so it's not going to come on. So, damn, looks like I bricked a cartridge. Okay, well, I don't have any other batteries for my Super Nintendo cartridges, and I don't have any other Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance that actually have any cartridges that I can actually do anything with. So, I think that pretty much ends the Twitch stream for the night. So, for you guys that stuck with me till the end, thank you very much, and uh, first Twitch stream, not everything went according to plan, but it looks like all my equipment's working, so hopefully I'll be able to do more of these in the future, and hopefully next time things go a little bit better, but you live and learn. I gotta go throw down some more money on another Ruby cartridge, but other than that, pretty good stream, I'd say. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I hope you guys have a great night.